We told you that we are heading north and that we've already headed north and we've seen a lot of things up in the north. But for most people, there's one place that says, now you're traveling north. And that would be the mile zero in Dawson Creek, mile zero for the Alaska Highway. Like Ooh. this place, you know, like, like this is where most people say, now you're traveling north. We're doing it. Put your sticker up. Hey, there's another sticker place we're heading to. Yeah. The sticker forest. Yeah. Sign forest. How far is it from mile zero in Dawson Creek to the signpost forest in Watson Lake? And how many days will it take us to get there? Yeah. We travel slow. We're kicking it. Right here. Do it. All right, guys, let's get in that vehicle. Hang we've, on, hang on, hang on. We've got gas. We've got all the gas we need for now. We can't get any more. We've got our supplies. We're going over there to pick up one more item, maybe two. And if you are at the mile zero signpost, or the mile zero, um, you know, thingy in Dawson Creek, come and take a picture of living that RV and do hashtag LLRV North 21 and Maybe we'll like send you something. Yeah, and the reason Lisa <laughs> couldn't say the milepost is because the actual milepost marker is like three blocks that way. That's why she was like, I can't say it. I know because this is really just the the souvenir kind of milepost. The actual mile zero milepost is about yeah, they can't. What say do a they call that? that way. When somebody when they put up a nostalgic location, a a shrine or whatever yeah, they want. Yeah, that's a good word. Like, it's what a shrine. They, what do they put it up? <laughs> Because it's just safer to stay here and get your picture taken. Maybe it's a mausoleum. Than to go in the middle of a <laughs> middle of a town. Anyway, let's go north. Let's do it. The Alaska Highway, right there, folks. We have just spent the last few days with family and friends because you can be in their town and in their space and go to their favorite campgrounds. So that's where we've been. It's been awesome. And now it's time to hit the road, Jack. the 
Alaska Highway right here. Right here. Where's right here? We are just south right of Fort Nelson. Right here. And we found a free boondocking location. It is an old provincial campground. You can see a few more trailers down that row there. Yeah. And it's great because, like did I say, it was free. We like yeah. free. Hey, free is very good. It's very good. I found this one, I believe, on iOverlander.com. A couple other sites we love to check out is freecampsites.net as well as campendium.com and just type in free as your filter. There is no way we would have found this other than the app, hey? Correct. That's the only option. Yeah. So we always like a good free campsite. <laughs> How many times can you say free? And it's beautiful. It's and we nice. have brand new bear spray. Yeah, we do. But In my back pocket. And apparently there's also an old airstrip here. So that's what we're walking to right now. See if we can find the airstrip um, and a ton of mosquitoes. Yeah, they, and that's because of the airstrip, I think. That's because they come in for landing <laughs> and that's why they're here. And giant dragonflies because I think the dragonflies eat the mosquitoes. The highway is right here, but where we are parked, you can't hear it because of the stand of trees, which is lovely. It's nice and quiet. And there's the airstrip. And there's the airstrip. This is so cool. I love doing a little bit of an explore. Nice. All right, I'll show you That's what it looks like. And recently somebody left a comment and asked us to tell them about our dog. So her name is Daphne and she's actually our daughter's dog. Anna bought her when she was 17 years old. Anna is now living in Africa and she said, mom and dad, can you look after my dog in her golden years? She is a Malamute, Alaskan Malamute crossed with a golden retriever. So she is about 90-ish pounds and 11 years old. So it's our joy to have Daphne with us for as long as we can have her. She's loving this lifestyle. It took her a bit to get used to it, but now she loves it and there's mud here. Yeah, she loves the travel and exploring. As soon as we slow down to look for a new location, she starts panting, she's at the door. She's like, let's go see where we're living tonight. So you can teach an old dog new tricks. All we need is two more. We can put these on Bessie. Actually, I'm really feeling pretty tired. <laughs> I uh, chatted with somebody at the campground last night who was there for, for who, who lives in Whitehorse, Yukon. They traveled on the Dempster Highway twice last year. Um, they said, the Dempster Highway is no problem. Um, there's way worse highways than that, way worse roads, but be prepared. And I'm like, okay, tell me what that means, be prepared. Oh, um, well, he said he had a flat tire and then 20 minutes later he had another flat tire. So make sure you go up there expecting to get a flat tire and you know what to do when you get one, which means it's not just a nail or a screw because it's actually torn. Uh, so newer tires, replacement tires with rim, and have the jack and all that stuff ready to go, and then enjoy. So that's what we're gonna do. We're not taking Bessie, we're taking the car. I asked him, what about the car? And he says, that, oh yeah, for sure. So we'll take, we'll put four new tires, four new steel rims on, on uh, Ruby, take her up to the Arctic Circle and back, and uh, he said, slow down if you're gonna be traveling past somebody or just take it slow and take your provisions and be and have a great time and we're like we're gonna do this it's gonna be great why are we doing it arctic circle we're doing it for you we're doing it to travel as far north as possible and we will probably drive just past the arctic circle into the northwest territories turn around and come back that's the goal all right let's go check out this airstrip that's it, airstrip. this is it and it's all covered in grass. That's good, it works. <laughs> so Ken, I was just thinking, the last time we walked along an airstrip was where? Uh, we were at Kingman. Kingman, Arizona. Daphne, leave it. At the airport. At the Kingman airport, the Kingman air show. It was amazing. It was incredible actually. And it was one of those serendipitous situations where we had no idea it was going to be there. Why you it walking? happened to be in town. Why are you walking backwards? Because I want to show the airstrip while I'm talking. Okay. But I also don't want to trip and fall. So That's right. enough of that silliness. Anyway, Kent, you should put a little bit of Kingman airstrip in here. 
Well, this is a great place to put Kingman airstrip. It is. Yes. Because, and that just was because we talked to a local who said, well, are you going to the air show? I said, what air show? <laughs> the one at the Kingman airport tomorrow. And it's the second annual and we said done. So we stayed overnight there. Yeah, it was awesome. Like was... VIPs, that felt really cool. The nice thing about an airport is it's usually level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was great. And we didn't have to find a place to park because we were parked for the whole night. Look at these barrels. Yeah. This is awesome. We are kind of stopped in Fort Nelson a bit longer than we had planned. Um, just so you know, Fort Nelson is a great place to get stocked up before you head up north. And well, that's what we did. So we will be posting our outfitting costs uh, at the end of our trip to let you know how much it costs just to get all the stuff that we felt we needed. Maybe we'll need it, maybe we won't. Anyway, the other thing we're doing here is Kent is at the A&W grabbing a coffee and downloading some um, files that he needs for work. So when you're working full time, well, we're not working full time, but when you're on the road full time and you're working, sometimes it is tricky to try and find places to get all of your internet stuff done. So yeah, we're in Fort Nelson. I actually lived here when I was three years old and I don't remember it, but it is kind of cool to go back to a place that you lived in, lived in when you were a kid. This is kind of neat. So far we're enjoying our going north trip and you can, if you want to follow along with hashtags, you can go to hashtag LLRV North 21 and you should be able to find all of our going north videos there. Of course we want to do everything we can to make it good for you and uh, help you guys learn stuff and I got to take care of some doggy doo doo business and we'll keep you posted. Well good morning. So this is where we stayed overnight. <laughs> okay, stop. We need to actually show you where we stayed overnight. Oh. We'll do a circle. Here we go. Circle pan, circle pan. Oh my goodness. Look at that view out of our kitchen window. That's amazing. <laughs> and of course that out of the back window. Oh, it's just 360 degree views out here. It's incredible. Oh, you switched sides. Now I gotta switch my hand. I know, no, 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 no. We're good. <laughs> there we go. Um, Okay, so what did we do yesterday? So we got going from <laughs> Castle Steamboat Mountain, that That's one, right. and got to Toad River, which is a whole bunch farther north and west. <laughs> and and oh, go ahead. And then Mancho Lake, um, but Toad River. Let's talk about Toad River for a minute. We stayed there in 2016 on the motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, at one of the cabins. Gr uh, woke up in the morning. I set my alarm and saw the um, moose across the lake in the weeds. What is she doing? Having a fun time. Okay. Just let her be. Daphne, you stay close. Don't get chewed up. Okay. I'm wondering if we should put her leash on. You can let her go. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. I interrupted you, Kent, about talking about Toad River. So you go ahead and tell. We were there on the motorcycle. We were there 2016 on the motorcycle, stayed in one of the cabins right on the lake. That was excellent. It that was. was glorious. And I think part of that night or that time that we stayed at Toad River yeah. was part of the motivation that got us full time in the RV because we were there and we're like, this is incredible. Like we need to experience this kind of thing more often in our life. So yeah. I think that was a pivotal moment that helped us get to where we are today. Yeah, I set my alarm, I woke up in the morning, I got my binoculars out, 2016, and saw the moose just uh, leaving the weeds, leaving the, uh, the marshy the, the, area, the marshy area yeah. at uh, five in the morning. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Lisa said, if you see anything like that, wake me up. And I'm like, Lisa, Lisa, I see them. You should wake up. So she does her routine, gets her contacts in, all that stuff, and it's like, oh, they're gone. <laughs> so I missed the moose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, then we went to Muncho Lake. Let's turn around and walk back this way. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let me show you guys more of this view. Hey, on the way to Muncho Lake, we saw this guy. Oh, he was so cute. This reindeer was so fun. He crossed the road. We slowed down, uh, got this video of him, and then Lisa called him a little bit, and we sped up. And so he's like, well, I want to stay. I want to go where you're going. <laughs> Hey buddy, you're so cute. You're such a 
such a good boy. You are. cutest little guy oh no way it was incredible so i want to hear your thoughts on what you think this guy is so i think he's a reindeer go into the comments oh and say if you think it's a <laughs> i don't really know what you think <laughs> and tell us if you think it's a reindeer or a caribou or an elk yeah and what is the difference between those three so we saw that guy we also saw the stone sheep that was pretty cool. Yeah, not stone sheep. They're just stone sheep. And they're not made out of stone, really. No, they're not. They're really not. <laughs> but they live on, on Stone Mountain in Stone Provincial Park. I think that's what it's called. So that's why they're called stone sheep. But they're so cute. The little babies just laying on the road. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. So, so huh. adorable. And then Muncho Lake. Oh, Muncho Lake is beautiful. Muncho Lake is incredible. I don't know how they decided to build a road beside it when they did the Alaska Highway. <laughs> it's like, uh, I guess you use lots of dynamite. Yeah, exactly. And my goodness, that's it's a beautiful lake. It goes on for a long ways. It's, it's just gorgeous. Oh, amazing. Lots of places to pull over. We just want to talk a little bit about staying overnight in yeah. the park. We did have somebody ask us a question and say, is it legal to stay on the side of the road in Canada? Which we did at uh, Steamboat yep. Mountain. Yep. Um, because that's just off the road and it was about 25 feet off the road. So it's not mm -hmm. like it was off the shoulder at yeah. the edge. And uh, then tonight we just pulled into a, a viewing area. Yeah, well last night we, we stayed here, which is the Mineral Lick hike, hiking trailhead. Yeah. Um, and this parking lot is huge and it's really flat and we're just like, you know what, this is the perfect place to stay overnight. The yes. thing is this, the only time I've seen any no overnight parking signs is uh -huh. in the towns. So... Mm -hmm. What about the, uh, where the, where we saw the, the hunters? Did it say overnight, no overnight there? You read it once. In okay, one of those... so if there's a sign that says don't park overnight, then don't park overnight. But yeah. if there's no sign, we've had no issues at all yeah. parking overnight. I mean, we don't pull out all the camping gear. We just stay the night and then move on the next day. Now, so... this isn't California. So <laughs> this is rural. That's right. That's the thing. And I think that's why they don't worry so much about people doing that because it's so far between towns. Like you really in the wilderness, you could have yeah. one or 200 miles between any kind of services or yeah. whatever. Even campgrounds, could they could be full or whatever. So Nobody out here calls their friends and say, hey, all of you guys, you should meet me here tonight. We're going to have a big do there's nobody around to call to, <laughs> to have a meetup and there's no cell service to call anybody. that's right <laughs> so there's that. here's my sat phone <laughs> exactly anyway so yeah also i just wanted to give you guys a quick update on our patreon page yeah i just did a bunch of i just did a big map that has all the places we've been so far for our north 21 trip and talking about where we're where we stopped where we've gone shopping the mosquitoes are getting bad we better keep moving that's right they're <laughs> and, hovering uh, yeah so check out patreon.com slash living light rv for the uh, for five dollars a month or more if you so desire you can access those that map as well as be part of our live zoom sessions and q and a's oh we also drop stuff. our uh our actual on on patreon we drop our actual location as we travel yeah so you can watch our little journey in real time yeah exactly so go ahead and head over to patreon.com slash living light rv check out see what we have over there and thanks for hanging out with us this week my name is lisa my name is kent we are living out in the bush light rv <laughs> we are out there and we are grabbing life by the tail you guys if you don't know us we have been living full-time in our RV for almost three years now and we did sell everything we downsized to this is our whole life everything is here it is so it's an amazing life if you're thinking of going full-time RVing definitely subscribe to our channel if you're interested in RV life at all subscribe to our channel and you guys we'll see you over on patreon and we'll also see you guys next Thursday take care and we're bringing you the wilds of northern Canada all the way to the Yukon it's fabulous take care you guys